say good morning. Uh, if you have a bulletin, if you're a visitor or anything, we have a little attachment inside the bulletin. Uh, if you would fill it out, we'll get a chance to get to know you. Uh, if you look at the uh, bulletin, it says, as you can tell, thanks to Autumn and Jama for directing Vacation Bible School this year. They did an awesome job. I don't know if there'll be more, but you've seen all the video screens. We, we just finished our vacation Bible school, and, and I thought it turned out pretty good. Uh, you never know what impact it might have on a little kid down the road. I know uh, we went out to eat yesterday, and uh, they brought our food in and everything. Looked good. We didn't think nothing about it. Maddox looked up and said, prayer. And so sort of got us, and I said, do you want to lead it? And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he bowed his head, amen. So it, was, it was pretty good. He hadn't done that before Bible school, so, you know, it, it was pretty touching. So if, if you look at the uh, upcoming events on June the 14th, we had WMU and then the 18th Father's Day program, and on the 21st is the uh, prayer time and articles of faith. So uh, let's remember these. And uh, I'll go now and ask for prayer requests, if there's any prayer requests. Remember uh, Gerald Mason and his family. His wife, Debbie, passed away yesterday. spoken request. Cheryl, will you lead us in prayer? Our dear, most kind, loving Heavenly Father, we come to thee this morning, Lord, with thankful hearts for the week that we've had, Lord, the uh, time that we've had with these children, God, and we pray, Lord, that a seed was planted, and uh, as they grow, God, that uh, it might be watered, they might be have a desire to come to church and know thee and the free pardon of sin, and Lord, we pray for all of those uh, of us that are saved, God. Help us to be better witnesses for thee. Help us to be bolder and strengthen us, God, that we can be bolder. And help us to read, study, and pray, Lord, that we would fight the good fight in the days ahead, Lord. We don't know when our time's up. We don't have any idea, but we just need to be working before that day comes, God. And help us to be ever mindful that you loved us enough that you sent your only begotten son and he died on the cross for our sins and he arose that third and appointed day lord and he conquered death and hell and as he conquered those lord he made a way for us and we don't have to pay anything it doesn't cost us anything help us lord once again to tell the good news of jesus christ and lord strengthen us at the meeting today lord help Corey, all those that take a part uh, that we might hear the word of truth lord and that it might uh, renew us, it might uplift us God, it might revive us again to go out this week and tell others about thee, and all these things we pray in thy divine name, and amen I'll ask is there any birthdays <laughs> stand and sing 485 out of the white book.
we'll sing 46 out of the Red Book. Amen. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. All right. It's good to be here today, and uh, we appreciate everybody that's come to be in God's house with us this morning. And uh, I tell you what, I am so thankful today uh, for the God and His grace and His mercy and His love. And uh, we have had a wonderful week this past week at Vacation Bible School. Uh, it has been uh, just great. It's been a blessing. Uh, maybe you already know, if you don't, uh, we have been blessed this week. Uh, Cullen Richardson accepted Christ as his Savior and as his Lord on Friday night. So we are so thankful and praise the Lord for that. Uh, so uh, Cullen's going to be coming forward here uh, towards the end of the service. And we will uh, uh, 
uh, uh, welcome him in for as a candidate for uh, church membership and baptism. So as he will uh, take the next steps to follow Jesus, as, as he's following Jesus, and take the next steps of uh, believers' baptism. So we're so thankful, and uh, we praise the Lord for uh, for that. So if you have your Bibles this morning and uh, you would like to turn with us, we are going to be reading today uh, as we continue through the book of First Thessalonians, and we're going to be in chapter 5. Uh, verses 19 through 22 and I would ask this morning if you can and you're able if you would please stand today uh, for the reading of God's word in 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 starting with verse number 19 this morning <clears throat> and God's word says as the Apostle Paul began to write to the church at Thessalonica in verse 19 says quench not the spirit despise not prophesying Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. And we ask and we pray, Father, that, uh, Lord, you would open our hearts today, Lord, to receive your word. And we pray that, Father, your word this morning would fall on the good ground and the good soil of our heart. We pray that, God, it would begin to take root in our life. And, Lord, begin to grow, and, God, that it would bring forth fruit for your kingdom and your honor and your glory. We pray that today that, Father, we would just not be a hearer of your word this morning, but, God, that we would be a doer of your word as well. Lord, help us to take your word, apply it to our heart, apply it to our life daily. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Uh, we're going to look at these verses today. And uh, the first uh, verse, first point that we're going to look at this morning is quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Now, uh, when we begin to look at this, and to kind of before we get into uh, this just a little bit this morning, uh, I want to share just a few things about uh, the Apostle Paul and what he's, who he's writing to. He's writing to, of course, here uh, to the church, the believers that are in Thessalonica and Thessalonica was a city a place that Paul went he began to preach on a missionary journey there were souls that were saved in the city as Paul uh, began to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified and from those believers from those that trusted Christ as their Savior there was a church that was formed and began to, uh, to develop and you look at the early uh, church, and you look at the, the gospel, and you look at Luke and the book of Acts, and then you begin to look at the writings of the Apostle Paul, uh, they show us just exactly how churches were planted and how churches started. And it started first with missionaries, men like Paul, apostles of Jesus Christ. They would go into the cities where the people were, and they would begin to proclaim the gospel the good news they would preach Jesus Christ and then there would be souls that were saved and converted and people would believe in the Lord and from that churches were planted and churches were started and they would begin to grow and those people that were in that church would begin to go out from their gathering and to tell others in the city or they would go to other places and on missionary journeys and begin to tell about Jesus and they would see souls saved so you saw this was just a continual process from the early church and somewhere along the way we have lost that but I believe it's time that we get back to that amen we've got to go and we've got to preach and we've got to go into the cities and into other places into the community and tell others about Jesus amen so we find Paul was giving them some instruction here and he says quench not the spirit we find here that this was a course of action this was a, a verb here when it says quench means that there was a course of action that needed to be taken here we find that this is the Holy Spirit that moves in the hearts of of believers us that have been saved that have trusted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior so we find here the first point this morning that we want to look at is quench not the spirit now what does the word quench mean this morning well we find here that quench means to extinguish 
or go out. It is also means to extinguish a fire or things on fire. Uh, when you look at it metaphorically, we find that it means to quench or to suppress. It means to stifle of divine influence. Uh, when you look at the Amplified Version, it, finds, it says this, Do not quench or subdue or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That is good for you and I this morning because when we have been saved by God's grace and we are a child of God, we've got the Holy Spirit of God working in our hearts and in our lives. And we do not need to suppress that. We don't need to subdue that. We don't need to be unresponsive to the working or the guidance or the direction of the Holy Spirit, but we need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I want to share just a few things with you this morning about quenching not the Holy Spirit. The work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God in the life of believers is very, very important this morning. It is very important that we suppress or we quench not or we don't subdue the Spirit of God working in our lives. The primary work of the Holy Spirit, as the Bible teaches us, as we know, is to draw us to Christ, isn't it? That is the primary work of the Holy Spirit. When the gospel is preached or when the gospel is taught, the word of God goes out. Or when we sit down and we read the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to draw us. It draws us to Jesus. That is the ministry and the working of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, but we know that the Holy Spirit of God, it convicts us, doesn't it? The Holy Spirit of God convicts our heart. It shows us where we've sinned. It shows us where we've missed the mark. It shows where we've missed the standard of Almighty God. We also know that it is the Holy Spirit of God spiritually that baptizes us into the body of Christ. Amen? And we know that from the Scripture. The Bible teaches us of John the Baptist. And we know the Bible said, John said, I indeed baptize with water water unto repentance. He said, but there's one that comes that's mightier than I, that's greater than I, and he baptized with fire and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. We find here that it's the Holy Spirit that indwells in us as believers. Once you are saved and born again, the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. Jesus said this about the Comforter and the Spirit. He said, once you have accepted Christ as your Savior, the Spirit of God takes up His home, His abode on the inside of you and I. The Spirit of God lives in our heart. He lives inside of us. He guides us. He directs us. He leads us. He teaches us. He said this, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send forth the Comforter. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will teach you in all things. And we find not only that, but the Spirit of God, it comforts us, but it assures us, doesn't it, as well. And we find, lastly, that the Spirit of God seals us. It secures us. The Apostle Paul wrote and said this. He said, for you are sealed unto the day of of redemption. It is the Spirit of God, once we are saved, that keeps us, that holds us, my friend, until that day, uh, my friend, that the Lord returns, uh, or God calls us home uh, individually. We are sealed and kept by the Spirit of God. The Apostle Paul tells the church of believers at Thessalonica to quench not the Spirit. Now, have you ever thought about that when we've read this? So if Paul is telling them to quench not the Spirit, don't subdue it, don't suppress it, don't neglect the working or the guiding of the Holy Spirit in your life, then there's also, he's telling us, that it is possible for you and I to quench the Holy Spirit, right? It is. It is very possible for us to quench the Spirit. You say, well, preacher, how is it that we can 
quench or we can suppress or subdue the working of the Holy Spirit in our life? Well, a couple of things. Whatever obstructs or hinders or dampens the work of the Holy Spirit in the souls of men is forbidden according to the Scripture. We find that when the, uh, when we, we are not to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We find here that when the Spirit of God speaks to our heart and when the Spirit of God says go, we are to respond obediently and we are to go. We find that when the Holy Spirit calls you, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit leads you into a ministry or into a mission for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are to respond in obedience and follow the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? We find right here that the, that the Apostle Paul, he allowed the Holy Spirit of God to lead him daily, every day in his life and in his ministry. And if the Apostle Paul allowed the Lord to do that, we should do that as well. Amen? We should be doing that as well in our life. We find right here that he encouraged the Thessalonians to allow the Spirit of God to lead them daily and not to quench the spirit with sin or selfish desires you see sin and selfish desires can quench the spirit of God it can suppress the spirit of God that is wanting to work in our hearts and work in our lives I thought about this a lot lately and the Lord's reminded me of this I want to encourage each and every one of us sitting here this morning and even for those that may be watching online Wherever you live, wherever you work, wherever you play, wherever you do life every day, do you know that Jesus can use you wherever you are? And my friend, wherever you live, wherever you work, wherever you play, wherever you do life every day, that is your mission field that God has put you in. And I want to encourage you this morning, wherever that mission field is, where it can be at home with your family, the greatest ministry that I can sit here and honestly tell you this morning is this, the greatest ministry that God has called me into and has given me is my family, is my home, is my children, is my wife. And listen, if I can't do that right, I can't do this right. Amen? Because listen, you have to, it starts at home and it starts with the family. Family. And the greatest ministry that you've been given is your family. You can pour and invest into your children and in your grandchildren and in your wife and in your husband. And my friend, you just, in your cousins or whatever, your aunts, your uncles, invest in your family. Pour into them. That is a wonderful mission field that God has given us. Not only is your family, but your workplace. We've all got co-workers that's lost. We've all got co-workers that don't know Jesus. And God's placed you there. He's put you in that place of work for a reason. And that reason is not just to make a paycheck, but that reason is to minister and to share and to tell people about Jesus. Amen? Listen, God can use our students at school around their friends, around their peers. My friend, you may be a teacher. God can use you at school. He can use you to show the love of Christ among those kids. Listen, you say, well, preacher, I can't say much. Well, you can share the love of Jesus with them. You can live a good life around them. And my friend, you can allow them to see Christ in you day in and day out. Wherever it is God's put you, whether it's on the ball field or where Wherever that is, allow God to use you in a mighty way to tell people about Jesus. Wherever you're at, there is a mission field for you. And God has called us to that. You can be down at the grocery store, be down at Walmart or Food City, wherever it is, God can use you to tell others about Jesus. So I want to, I want to encourage you this morning. When God is speaking to your heart, when that Holy Spirit of God is working in your heart and He's guiding you and directing you in your heart, and whether you're at home, whether you're at work, whether you're at school, whether you're down at the grocery store, whether you're on the ball field, wherever you may be, around your neighbors, and God speaks in that still small voice and He says, Tell them about me. Tell them your testimony. Tell them about what I've done for you in your life. I want to encourage you, don't quench that. Don't suppress that. Don't subdue that.
but allow God to use you and work through you and tell them about Jesus. That second point we want to look at this morning says despise not prophesying. Despise not prophesying. When you look at this, uh, the CSB says don't despise prophecies. Uh, or that word despise means to regard as nothing. Uh, it says do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies spoken, revelations, words of instruction or exhortation or warning. In this context, right here, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Thessalonians in the church because in the church the gift of prophecy was being despised. And we find right here, uh, you might ask yourself the question, what is prophecy this morning? What is prophecy? Well, prophecy is this. It is the foretelling of things that have happened, that will happen in the future and also the foretelling of things already foretold. We've got to keep in mind right here when Paul was writing this letter to the Thessalonican church, we've got to remember that all they had as far as writings goes that they could go off of was the Old Testament. That's all they had. The writings of Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they had not been written yet. They didn't have what we knew as the New Testament. All they had was the Old Testament. So what did they have? Well, they had the Old Testament prophets that they were were uh, sharing and telling of things that had already been told and that had come to uh, come to uh, happen through Jesus Christ. And so what they had was was they had the gospel, they had the gospel testimony of Jesus, they had the life of Jesus, and they had seen that in a firsthand experience. So they were eyewitnesses of the gospel. They had seen Christ, they had heard of Christ, they knew Christ, they were a follower of the Lord so that's what they had and I thought about this and the Lord reminded me every preacher and pastor and minister and every Sunday school teacher in some sense is like a prophet because they are foretelling what has already been told amen we're not in a sense as Daniel or Ezekiel was as they were telling something that was to come but my friend you and I we are telling something and telling the story that has been told for years amen I love that old hymn that we sing from time to time it says I love to tell the story Amen. Don't you love to tell the story this morning about what Jesus has done for you? Don't you love to tell the story about what Jesus has done in his word? That's what we need to be doing, telling the story. And today we find here that, that, that then they had only the Old Testament, but we are living in a great day and time. You know why? Because today we have the perfect word of God. Amen. I didn't get many amens on that. We have the perfect word of God. We have the inerrant and infallible word of God. It is complete. The word of God is lacking nothing at all. You see, in God's word, we have everything that we need, my friend, as a Christian, to be able to share about Jesus Christ to lost sinners. We have everything we need in God's word today that will lead us and guide us in the Christian life and the way that we are to live. We have the word of God today and he says do not despise the teachings of Jesus or the word of God but we need to heed to the instruction and the warning that the word of God gives us amen so as the church there in Thessalonica they were despising they weren't heeding to those preachers or teachers or the word that was being taught now they did have to deal with false prophets in that day but Paul is reminding me, saying, listen, these men that are preaching the word of God, that are proclaiming the word of God, 
these women that are, are teaching in the houses and in the home churches that are in there and, and these la- teaching other ladies and different things like that. He said, listen, these people that are doing this, he said, don't despise them if they are teaching uh, the true gospel. If they're preaching and they're teaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified, that He died on the cross for your sin, that He was buried and He rose the third and glorious day, that He was born of a virgin, that He came in the flesh, that He truly is the Son of the living God. Do not despise those preachings or those teachings, those prophecies, because that is the true spoken Word of God. Amen? Listen, when God's Word is spoken, when we sit down and read God's Word, when God's Word is preached and when God's Word is taught, we should not despise the teaching or the preaching of God's Word. And we shouldn't neglect it in our life. But when God's Word speaks to our heart, we have to accept it and allow our lives to begin to conform to the Word of God. Amen? We are to allow God's Word to change us each and every day. Paul stated right there in chapter 5, verse number 12, if you want to look, it says real quick, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. What was Paul? He started out, uh, verse number 12 right there, he's saying, Listen, these that are preaching, these that are teaching the gospel, he said, I, here's what I want you to do. He said, We ask you, brothers and sisters, to know them which labor among you or give recognition to those over you in the Lord. He's saying that leads you to esteem, to regard them. He He said to think very highly of them and in their love and in their walk and in their work of the Lord. Amen? Don't despise prophecies this morning. Don't despise the Word of God, but accept the Word of God. Apply the Word of God to your heart and to your life. Now look here, the next verse we want to look at. Verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. That brings us to our third point this morning. What is he saying here? What do we do? Prove all things. What's he saying? Test all things. Test all things. But test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. You say, preacher, how do we test all things? How do we prove all things? Well, it goes back to this. It goes back to the Word of God. It goes back to the Word of God. How can we test things or prove things this morning? The Word of God. The Bible. We need to read God's Word. We need to read the Bible. Our Scripture, Scripture is our guide this morning. And whatever it is that we're going through in life, we need to look, we need to, look to God's Word. We need to, my friend, test all things, prove all things according to God's Word. Look at that second part of the verse. What does he say? Hold fast that which is good. Hold on to that which is good. Hold firmly to that which is good. Once we have proven or tested all things with God, God's word, then we need to hold on to that which is good. Hold firmly to those things, the things of God. Look at verse 14. Here's what he says. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. What's he saying? He's saying comfort the discouraged. Help the weak. Not only that, be patient with everyone. Man, we need to be patient, don't we? We do. We need to encourage the, we need to be more encouraging. We need to be, not only that, we need to help the weak. We need to help the feeble-minded. We need to be patient with everyone. You see, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He was patient. He was loving. He was merciful. He was caring. My friend, He was so caring with those disciples when you read through the Scripture. There are things, those guys, those twelve, man, they just didn't get it. There was times that he was trying to teach them and tell them, and it just would not get through their mind. They could not comprehend. They could not understand. And Jesus even at times says, Man, you, are you guys just not getting this? Are you not understanding? And, but he would take the time in patience and love, and he'd say, All right, here's how we're going to go about this. And he would explain it just a little bit better. And he would try to open their eyes and try to get them to see and to understand what it was that he was teaching there. He also says, see that you pay, that no one repays evil for any to anyone. Amen. And lastly, this morning, we want to look at, in verse 22, it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. You say, how do you do that? Well, we just need to stay away. 
Stay away from every kind of evil. Evil. Abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw. Keep yourself away from it. You say, preacher, how can we do that in a world that we live in? For you and I that's been saved by God's grace, we are to be going to the lost and going to the sinner and telling them about Jesus. But we also have to be on guard that we don't give ourselves away to the evil and the lust and the things of this world as well. So we find right here, it's very interesting that Paul even wrote this because it kind of gets back home to the present day and time in Thessalonica. And I want to share with you just a little bit what Thessalonica looked like at the time of Paul's writings. It was inhabited by Greeks and Romans and Jews. Not only was it inhabited by Greeks, Romans, and Jews, but idolatry was prevalent on every hand. There were many gods, lowercase g, they served. They served a lot of different gods. The Greeks had their gods. The Romans had their gods. The Jewish uh, people of that time in the cities, they had their synagogues that they had built. There were all kinds of places of worship, all kinds of gods that they could serve and worship that they were giving themselves into. In Paul's day, even those Jews had synagogues in the city. With idolatry present in the city, there is strong reason to believe that it was very ungodly. It was a very ungodly city. But we find that idolatry always produces gross immorality. When you study on pagan worship and idolatry worship, there was so much immorality, gross immorality, that went along with that type of worship in that day and time. I thought about this and the Lord reminded me, we too have idols in our life, don't we? You know, we may, we may not be serving a golden image or some statue or, or something like they were at that moment in time and in that day. But, you know, you and I, we've made gods, and we've made gods in our own life. You say, well, preacher, how do we do that? Well, anything that we've given our time, our money, our gifts, our talents, man, we've just committed our life to to serving and going and doing and we're giving more time and more effort and we're investing more and more in all those things and maybe the things that the world has to offer we're doing that more than what we're doing with the Lord Jesus Christ it's become an idol in our life it's become something we begin to worship and give more time to we find right here that Paul reminds the Thessalonians again in verse 15. He said, But ever follow, always pursue what is good, both among yourselves and one for another and for all. We find that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us a great example of praying in the Lord's Prayer of resisting the temptation of the day. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, the Jesus says this, and he says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus went on to say in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, He said this, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. He said, But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. In Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you of your wrongdoings. We find this morning that the Apostle Paul has gave us some good verses and good points here. Number one, quench not the Spirit. Number two, don't despise prophecies or the Word of God. He went on to say not only that, but thirdly he said to prove all things, hold fast that which is good, and then lastly to abstain from all appearance of evil. I want to encourage you this morning, if God is speaking to your heart today, and he's spoken to your heart, and you feel the need to come to this altar and pray this morning, I want to encourage you just to mind the Lord. I'm going to ask if they'll come and get ready for a time of invitation. I want to encourage everybody this morning, if you would, if you would stand to your feet. I encourage everyone this morning, if you would, just bow your head and close your eyes for just a minute.
And take this time just to allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, just to speak to your heart. God is speaking to your heart this morning and His Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. And He's been leading you to witness to that neighbor or to that lost co-worker, that friend at school or that parent that your kid plays ball with. Wherever it may be or whoever it may be, if God's been speaking to you and you've just been suppressing that and putting that down. I pray this morning that if God has spoken to you, I pray today that you would ask Him just to help you be obedient to do what He's leading and calling you to do. And pray that God would give you another opportunity and another chance to be able to tell them about you, to tell them about Jesus and what God has done for you in your life. Maybe you're here this morning, maybe maybe God's working in your heart, young man, young old man, whatever your age may be, maybe God's been dealing with you, maybe he's calling you to preach today. And you've been suppressing that and been putting that down, but God's been dealing with your heart and he's been calling you to preach. Won't you come this morning and you just surrender to what God has called you to do? Maybe you're a young man, young woman, here today and God's calling you to go on a mission trip God's calling you to be a missionary whatever it is I encourage you to be obedient and mindful to that maybe God's calling leading you in to a ministry I encourage you to be obedient and mindful for that but I encourage you today don't quench the spirit don't despise the word of God abstain from all appearance of evil hold fast to that which is good Prove all things and test all things. As they go ahead and begin to play, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. God, I thank you for calling me to preach. God, I thank you for this church. God, I thank you for the group of believers that make up this body. Lord, I pray that, God, you would help us be a church that, Father, is ready to go. That we'd go out into the community. That we would tell people about you, Lord, where we live, where we work, what people we do life with every day. That, God, you would help us to tell them about you. I pray this morning, Father, if there's someone here today that's lost and does not know you as their Savior today, I pray that, Father, just as blind Bartimaeus called out and, and as he was saying, have mercy on me, son of David. And Jesus asked him that question. He said, what can I do for you? And his reply and his answer is that I may see. And because of his faith, he was saved. I pray if there's someone here this morning, Father, that, that is there today that's lost, that they would come this morning, call on your name, accept you, receive you as their Savior. God, we love you so much. We thank you. We praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. If you feel the need to come pray this morning, the altar's open. We encourage you to mind the Lord as they as they sing. Take up my cross.
appreciate that song this morning. And man, that's a prayer, isn't it? Uh, that wherever the Lord Jesus Christ leads us, we need to be going. We need to be following him. And uh, he said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross daily, and follow me. And uh, the Lord Jesus has given us an invitation and a call uh, to surrender our life and our heart, our wants, our desires each and every day and just follow the Lord Jesus. It has certainly been good to be in God's house today. And uh, if you've enjoyed being in the Lord's house, say amen this morning. Amen. 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 Appreciate everybody that's come to be with us today. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Brother Cullen Richardson. He's going to come forward this morning. And uh, Cullen accepted Christ as his Savior uh, in Vacation Bible School on Friday night. And uh, he has a wonderful testimony. And uh, the, the Lord, uh, we'll share just a little bit of it. Cullen's a little shy, but... Um, the Friday night, uh, the message the Lord had given us to preach was on blind Bartimaeus. And uh, he said that his heart was about to beat out of his chest, felt like he was going to throw up. <laughs> he was so sick. But he said that he knew that he needed to call on the Lord. And he said all he knew to do was just like what the blind man Bartimaeus did, is he said, Lord, save me. And that's what he did. And God saved him. And uh, so just thank the Lord. I praise the Lord for that testimony. And uh, I pray for Cullen, and let's pray for him, uh, that God would just continue to grow Cullen, and he would take him and use him for his kingdom, his honor, and his glory. God might have big plans for Cullen one of these days, uh, so you just be much in prayer for him. But Cullen has come, and he's wanting to follow in believers' baptism as a candidate for baptism and church membership. And so what I hear a motion made this morning that we accept him as a candidate for baptism to church membership. Make a motion. Do we hear a second on that? Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, carry. Well, we'll set up a time for Brother Cullen to come and be baptized, and then we will give him the right hand of fellowship uh, after that baptism. Does anybody this morning have a word of testimony or anything on your heart that you feel led to say? And I encourage you this morning just to be obedient, mindful of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? All righty. Amen. Amen. There's some answered prayers there. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Well, we encourage everybody that can and will come back and be with us on Wednesday night. Uh, we'll start, uh, there is WMU meeting, and that's Women on Mission, uh, Women's Missionary Union. That will start at 6 o'clock, and they will meet. Uh, so if you are a lady in the church, you'd like to come be a part of that uh, WMU meeting. That starts at 6. And then 7 o'clock, of course, will be our prayer meeting and Bible study upstairs. Our children, our youth classes, will, uh, our youth's up here now uh, for uh, as we're going through the articles of faith and our doctrine. Uh, but our children will be downstairs for their mission program. So remember them uh, when you pray. We encourage everybody that can and will come be with us at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. And uh, don't forget this coming week, I'll help, us some, help some of us out. It's Father's Day. Uh, so uh, Father's Day is coming up next Sunday. So keep that in mind. And uh, thank the Lord for the fathers that he has given us and he's put in our life. And uh, Allison, I believe, will be uh, taking care of our special program uh, for the fathers that we'll have at the close of next Sunday's service. So remember that. Well, we encourage you come back, be with us. If you're visiting with us today, we hope and pray we've made you feel welcome and loved and at home. Please take a time, just a few minutes, fill out the guest card in the bulletin. You can place that in the offering plate on your way out this morning. I'm going to ask our young men if they'll come and get ready to receive the morning offering today. And as they're coming, we just encourage you to give today out of a joyful heart, out of obedience to what God has given and blessed us. Uh, the wonderful thing about the Lord is this. We don't own a thing, do we? Uh, everything we've got and everything has been given to us by the Lord. He's allowed us to have it. Uh, so I encourage you today just to give out of obedience. Do what God is leading you to do and be mindful of that. Brother Francis Hamilton, will you dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning?